What is up guys, happy Monday and welcome to today's prediction video. So for today's video we will be looking at the upcoming Manchester derby taking place this weekend on the 29th of October with Manchester United who are currently in 8th on 15 points playing hosts to Manchester City who are currently leading the Premier League on 21 points at Old Trafford. Now before we get into this video, I just want everybody to please take this video with a grain of salt because remember both of these teams have midweek fixtures so a lot in this prediction video could be influenced by what happens in those fixtures. We will be discussing that a little bit more later in the S3M2 verdict portion of this video but for now let's just get into the last time these two sides met which was on the 3rd of June 2023 in the FA Cup final last season. City coming out as 2-1 victors against Manchester United. The citizens opened the scoring in the first minute thanks to Ilkay Gundogan. It is a cushioned header that comes down to Gundogan and he just volleys it over the keeper into the back of the net. This happens literally within 16 seconds of kickoff. United didn't even know what was happening at that point and I don't think they even touched the ball. City literally just kept it from the kickoff and converted their chance. United, however, got an equaliser in the 33rd minute. Bruno Fernandes finding the back of the net from the penalty spot after the referee and VAR consulted and decided that Jack Grealish should actually handle the ball in the Manchester City box. And then it looked kind of a little even. A half time comes along and in the 51st minute, City are at it again. Kevin De Bruyne playing a free kick in from pretty much close to the corner flag. And again, Gundogan on the half volley, hitting it into the ground and it just going through all of the bodies and finding the back of the net. The Manchester United goalkeeper probably blinded by everything that's happening in front of him and helpless to do anything about it. And the match just ends that way. City using their class and their quality to see the game out. United knocking on the door but not being able to get themselves back into things. We start our team analysis off with the home team being Manchester United since this match is being played at Old Trafford. It is three wins and two losses in the last five games for Manchester United. Again, please keep in mind that United would still have to play Copenhagen on Wednesday in the Champions League, so that might change. But I'm pretty sure that they should be going out to get all three points there as well. Key players I'd like to highlight for the Red Devils here, obviously starting off with Scott McTominay. Now Casemiro would be the player that you'd expect to be playing in that central midfield but he'll probably be missing that match um, and I think McTominay will be the one to partner Amrabat in the centre of midfield. Now McTominay is the kind of player who gets weird goals out of nowhere and he's had to pull Manchester United out of the fire recently um, so I think he's already feeling positive and um, feeling like he can probably get an impact on this match. Next up I want to talk Bruno Fernandes. Now, two goals and three assists for him as well so far in all competitions for United. Um, Bruno Fernandes you'd be expecting to play a kind of number 10 role orchestrating things in front of McTominay and probably Amrabat. Um, and the player he will be looking for up front is probably going to be Rasmus Hoyland. Now Hoyland joined United and he's already got three goals in all competitions for the Red Devils. Um, but Hoyland is supposed to be Manchester United's equivalent of Erling Haaland. Um, it has yet to be seen if he will reach th those heights, um, but I think he's got a pretty decent shot of getting there. Um, it's taken him a bit of time to find his feet at Old Trafford. Um, his best performances so far coming in the Champions League, so don't be surprised if he gets a goal or two against Copenhagen before this. Um, but I think Hoyland will play a very, very important role for United in this fixture. Next up, we move on to Manchester City. Now, for City, their last five, the opposite of United's. Three losses and two wins. Um, again, please keep in mind that City would have to travel to Young Boys on Wednesday in the Champions League as well. Um, but I think for them, it's, it's a formality that they'll probably win it. But it's not even necessary because they've competed and performed so well in the Champions League that I think they can afford to even let that match go. A player I'd like to highlight for Manchester City is Erling Haaland with his 9 goals and 2 assists so far for Manchester City in all competitions this season. 
um, Haaland can be a real nuisance for teams to deal with if they don't deal with him efficiently. Um, and I do expect Haaland to be a nightmare for Manchester United to deal with. Um, I think he's going to be harassing a centre-back uh, pairing of probably Harry Maguire and I'm assuming Lindelof maybe. Um, but he's going to make things very, very difficult for them. Now, um, I think the player behind him is going to be Julian Alvarez with seven goals and four assists of his own for City in all competitions this season. Alvarez and Haaland have sort of struck up some real chemistry um, and it's been necessary with the injury to De Bruyne which will probably keep him out until early next year. Um, and Alvarez has, has been able to play both goal scorer and provider when it's necessary, um, both for City and for Argentina. And finally, I want to talk Mateo Kovacic. Now, this is another player that will be highlighted thanks to the absence of Kevin De Bruyne. Now, we already know Gundogan played a very ro important role in this fixture um, in the FA Cup. Kovacic was brought in to replace Gundogan, um, but I don't think he's reached the heights that perhaps the German would have hit. Um, I think Kovacic brings something a little more different to Manchester City. Um, Kovacic is the kind of player who brings a more static uh, playmaking role. Um, he has the potential to play some gorgeous, gorgeous long balls in uh, to his forward players. Um, and hopefully he will be able to do that for the citizens at Old Trafford this weekend. Okay, on to the S3M2 verdict. Now, Manchester United fans may want to look away for this one. In the last five meetings between these two sides, it has been just a solitary win for the Red Devils with Manchester City coming out victorious four times um, so obviously the citizens are overwhelming favorites now i'm gonna touch again on what i said earlier about the uefa champions league fixtures that these two sides have to play city have played so well in the champions league that this fixture for them against young boys is a formality city could draw they could lose and they're still in a very strong position in the champions league united on the other hand welcome copenhagen on tuesday night and it's difficult united have no points in the Champions League so far um, against like Galatasaray, who they would have been expected to win against, and they didn't. Um, it, it's ugly for United. They're under so much of pressure right now. I do not want to be Eric Den Haag, honestly. Um, knowing that they're just six points behind City, who are leading the race, and United are in eighth, means that there's still pressure on them to kind of compete for the league as well. So, while City are competing on all fronts, pretty cool and calm and collected so far, United are competing under so much pressure. Um, I'm going to actually side with Manchester City here, simply because um, I think United have, they kind of have to go all out from here on. Whereas City can take things a little easier. Um, I'm not saying United can't win this one, because if you look at it, uh, City play a more static style of football, while United are dynamic. They've got players who will be running all over the show at all times. I think um, amongst the players that I've named, you can also think Ganacho, um, Anthony as well, Marcus Rashford. Um, but City in their own right as well, they're looking a little weaker than they did last season against Manchester United. But by no means are City looking vulnerable. Um, both of these teams got 2-1 results in their last fixtures as well. But if you look at it, it was completely different. United are often chasing games. City are often kind of leading games early and then maybe taking their foot off the gas pedal a little. Um, but I think knowing that this is a Manchester derby makes it so much more high pressure. Um, I think both sides are going to want all three points here. But I think City... Um, just knowing, like I said, that they can go out and rest players midweek in those fixtures or in that fixture um, makes it so much easier for them. Uh, hi, <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love. Um, if you enjoyed the content, why not? You know drop a like down below or comment in the comment section um maybe even consider subscribing to the channel and i mean while you are here right now have a look at some of our old videos too um they should be appearing on the screen right now along with that subscribe button so you know exactly what to do um <laughs>
thank you so much. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And have a great day out there. And we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thanks. Stay safe.